Oh, yeah. And now, our feature presentation. To be in your presence representing the man of the hour. How many of y'all seen uh, uh, the Minnesota on television last night? They had the Minnesota on television last night. Did like an hour special on him. But, you know, I just want to say in short, brothers and sisters, that Farrakhan has become absolutely a force to be reckoned with. You know, they can't put him under a rock no more. They can't put him under some kind of board no more. They can't hide him off in some kind of corner no more. Because not only black people recognize him far to be the man that he is today, but you have Japanese, you have Chinese, you have Indians, and you have white people and people all over the world is recognizing far as being this man who they can seek refuge in. So we know over here on the west side that we love the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan and we have strong backing and support for him. Is that right? Well, brothers and sisters, we are blessed today to have and I miss a man who walked with the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan during the days when he was a young man and when he walked with the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. We have a man with us today, brothers and sisters. We have a man here today. You have to thank God for allowing you to come out here on this mighty west side on this very day. You might have not have came out yesterday. And you might not come out tomorrow. But the mere fact that you came out today, brothers and sisters, your life will be better once you leave this place today. Because we have a man who has walked with the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan. We have a man who has walked all the way almost through the history with the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan. You don't have to worry about nobody writing no book about him. You don't have to worry about looking at TV to learn anything about him. You're talking about a man who has walked with him firsthand, who done been there with him, went through ups and his downs. So, brothers and sisters, I want y'all to help me and to bring on our brother from Atlanta, Georgia. When he was the minister in Atlanta, Georgia, back in the first, they call him the Rock of the South. Meaning nothing moved in the South unless they check with this man. Let's give it up for our brother, Minister Abdul Rahman Muhammad. Give him a hand, brothers and sisters. In the name of Almighty God, Allah, the great God that was to come, has come. He came to us in the personage of the great, 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 great Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praises are due forever. He was in his ministry for over a year before he found the one that he was looking for. And he, he examined everybody, and everybody listened to him, but they didn't know who he was. Yes, and one day, a little man heard him, and he told me later on, when he first saw him, he knew that he was God. Yes, that man recognized God in person. Yes, and that man came from Georgia. Yes, sir. By the way, the same place I came from. And he recognized him. And then, as you're going to shake my hand after the meeting is over with, he came up to shake the great one's hand. And he told the great one, I know who you are. You have a long way to Jesus. And he said, yes, but the rest of them don't know that. Now, you know... That man was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, sir. That man took on the beast single-handed. Now, you know that was something that that attacked the white man in 1931. Yes, sir. Huh? And live to talk about it. If he didn't meet with God, who you think he met with? It's easy. It's easy. It's easy to rationale this. Who 
holding Firecon up today? Huh? When the whole world is against him. I should say the whole infidel world is against him. Because he doesn't beat the Muslim world down. They're throwing their crowns down at his feet now. Bearing witness that he's the Majeddi. You know the you know the duty of the Majeddi? He renews Islam. And kill the swine. Huh? Not only the physical swine that people eat, but he's gonna kill swine mentality. Huh? So Looking at all these things, you shouldn't doubt whether God have come to us or not. Look at it. I got to give you a lot of simplicity today because I want everybody to believe today. In, in fact, nobody don't suppose to not believe this. I don't, I don't see how nobody can hear this and say, I don't believe it. When the white man brought you here and stripped you of your name, language, history, and culture, raped and lynched you, and put you in his knowledge. Uh, uh, you a bastard child in the knowledge of the white man. Uh, and then you had the audacity to jump up and argue with me about what I'm talking about. I should take you out of town and burn you in acid. That's right. Well, uh, what we, what we teach, we prove it by Scripture. We prove it by Scripture. We know. Everybody here is from Missouri. The show, the show me state. Is that right or wrong? We, we, we have we to prove things to so-called Negroes. White folks don't have to prove nothing to you. White folks say we had 30,000 in New York. The niggas said, yeah, that's all the niggas had out there was 30,000. We had over 2 million at the million man mark. Over 2 million. Crack a house. Oh, uh, somewhere along 400,000. We had we had four hundred thousand in the park before daybreak. But the cracker don't care. He just la 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 because he know he has made you Negroes. Oh, blind, deaf, and dumb Negro. He know he know you don't believe. Fat meat is greasy and grits is gross and eggs is poultry. We know that. He know you don't believe nothing. But see, I have to get in the books with you because I don't know nothing but the book. See, I'm a religious man. I'm a scripture man. I have to talk to you from scripture. And now, what you don't understand is Everything we live in is right here in this book. Everything. What the disbelievers going to say, what the believers will say. What God will say, what the devil will say. Already have been pre-written. And it takes a God to pre-write something, don't it? All right, now listen to this lesson. See, when you come in here, you go to school. You go to school over here. Yes, sir. Yeah. You go to school. Elijah Muhammad had students going to school, and the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan was the best of the students. Yes, sir. That's why he's where he is today. He was the best student. I know because I was a student with him. We used to go to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's home, sit down there and sup with him for hours. And we all lived in the Continental Plaza downtown, so we all, when we get back down there, we go sit down somewhere and dissect everything the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said. And Farrakhan would be leading the charge. We wanted to lollygag. Hang out. Uh, 
don't mess around. Before I come, let's come on, let's sit down, let's talk about what the, the Holy Apostle said. And then I remember some he said, then the, the other people forgot. And then somebody else, we just keep feeding one another like that. And when we leave there, we load it, baby. We, we got it all down packed. And I just, I just get on the plane going back to Atlanta pushing it. Hurry up. Hurry up. Get back here. I got to tell my people this good news. Huh? Because you don't supposed to have a divine man in your midst and miss him. You can't, you know, how you going to miss a divine man? You got to be crazy. You got to be the most unworthy person there is on earth to miss a divine man. If you read anything in the scripture, you know the power of forces in the world don't agree with the divine man. Caesar was against Jesus. Pharaoh was against Moses. The people of Noah's time was against him. No, you couldn't find nobody righteous in Lot's time. Huh? Not even one person. God would have spared the city if they had had one righteous. Huh? So now the whole world is against a righteous man. Now, you who want to be righteous today, the world don't like you. They don't like these sisters dressing and covering their beautiful bodies in, in these garments. These, these, these vultures want to see everything. Huh? Oh, Oh, hound dog snooping all the time. Is that right or wrong? Uh, and it is introduced nudity to the world as fashion. Huh? They don't care about no decent women and decent men today. And they know that's what the nation of Islam stands for, so, so they have to get us. They have to get us. But it's all in vain. Yes, we are not to be gotten. We are to overcome this world. Huh? He it is who sent his messenger with the guidance and the true religion. That he may make it overcome the religions, all of them. Though the polytheists may be adverse. That's John and Elijah Muhammad and Firecon. What we are doing is going to overcome everything. Because you just can't keep it, keep holding it back, baby. You can't just keep denying that we are not right. Huh? When God is showing you signs every day, he's behind Farrakhan. Look how bad that thing was in, in, in Washington, D.C. You got to talk about it. Because you cannot go through life without reflecting on them, the glory and the mightiness of God, Almighty God. Yes, Here's a man asked for a million and two showed up. Yes, now, you know, if you wasn't in a meeting with the nation of Islam, you never would get this many black folks together. Yes, right here. Yes, Not talking about two million. Yes, right here without some disturbment. Yes, huh? yes, and if it wasn't a nation of Islam meeting, the, the brother will be over here playing with the sisters. Huh? Is that right or wrong? He never became a scientist. So you're a god. And the only thing you godly in doing now is taking the sisters' clothes off. Huh? You're a scientist in doing that. Huh? Oh, you can talk, talk, talk. Huh? So if it wasn't the nation of Islam, me, it, it'd just be anarchy in here. Huh? Filth, filth would be flowing. Is that right or wrong? Huh? But see, this is the real deal here. They say Elijah Muhammad made this up. Who, who can make up something to keep the brothers away from the sisters? Who 
can make that up? Who can make niggas such each other in 1930? That's right. 1930, everybody used to say, all oh, the Muslim niggas, they search for the going there. I'm not going in there. What kind of house of religion is that? Everywhere you go today, they're searching, aren't they? Huh? Aren't they? Elijah Muhammad saw what was coming long, long, long time ago. Huh? Think about it. We, the Muslims, stopped smoking on airplanes. We did that. Huh? First, you could smoke all over the airplanes. And then one of the sisters protested, said, oh, no, why don't y'all have no smoking areas in here? So the airlines instituted no smoking areas on the airplanes. Then we got tired of that, said, take it all out. And they had to take it all out. Elijah Muhammad was telling us cigarettes were no good in 1930. In every movie you see the movie stars. And the movie stars was our God. The Clark Gamers and the George Raps and the James Cagnes and the Ebba G. Robinson. And the Barbara Standard and the Betty Davis. And the Hedy Lamars. And the, and the Marilyn Monroe. Huh? Every time you saw them. And here a nigga go light up and cough all night. <coughs> cough, <coughs> cough all night. Because his throat would tell him, he said, fool, what are you doing to me? Uh, are you a fool putting all this acid down my throat? And we forced ourselves to cultivate the taste so we stand on the block and be cool as a fool. Is that right or wrong? Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the world. My topic today is far con the faithful. Far con the faithful. Hang with me. Hang with me and quit looking so ugly. You ain't got nothing, boy. I, I got more Islam than in my little finger. Go ahead. Uh, I'd have forgot more than most people will know. I've been, I've been riding with Elijah Muhammad over 40 years. I done taught all over the South. I done taught in federal penitentiaries, Rayford Prison, Atlanta Federal Penitentiary, Huntsville Prison in Texas. Huh? The same thing I'm going to talk to you about today. The, cr the crackers used to look at me and say, this nigga got some nerve coming in here talking like this. And I stand there and say, open up the slammer. The door will open up. I step in and hit me behind the back. It's a slammer, all right. They named it right. It's Stone Slammer. But the crackers used to look at this nigga got this much nerve come up in here talking about the black god. Somebody must have been here to teach this nigga this. Because I gave him a white Jesus. I, t I took the nigga's name from him. I named the name, I named the nigga Witherspoon. Carl Pepper. O'Reilly, Smith, Jackson, and Jones. I stole the niggas' language from them. Huh? I got the niggas speaking my bastard tongue. The nigga don't even know his own nationality. Where did this nigga come from with this stuff he talking now? Somebody had to show up there. Is that right or wrong? All right. Who made the Bible a holy Quran? How long ago? And will you tell us why does Islam renew her history every 25,000 years? Now remember now, I told you that it have already been written. What we're doing in America, huh? 
the slavery of us coming here in America was pre-written before we got here. Huh? Now, if all of that, if a man acquaints you with all of that, who do you think he is? He ain't no Johnny Come Lily. He ain't, he, ain't no, he ain't no dreamer. He ain't no soothsayer. He's not a part. If he can acquaint you with your history in the book, all you have to do is think and rationalize. That's why I ain't afraid of nothing. I know the God man is here. And the only safety I have is with him. When I was sitting up there in the U.N. with fire car the other day, and, and we was in what we call a duck shoot. Right, behind, right down in between these big, huge buildings. If, if, if the enemy had high power rifles, they could have picked us off one by one. But I didn't fear nothing. Why can't I fear nothing? Why? Why? Because the God that we serve have power over everything. Power over man's nerve. Power over what he want to do if he could do. He have power over everything. That's why I walk boldly in America. I walk up a cracker's back, right up his chest and down his back. Thinking about no cracker. Now listen, the Holy Quran, our Bible is made by the original people who is Allah, the supreme being, who, black man of Asia, we, we thought we were Negroes, colored folk, but here Elijah Muhammad telling me I'm the black man of Asia. I asked him one day, what Asia mean, the Holy Apostle? He said, Asia mean the ever-living. Huh? Huh? The Asia is Alpha and Omega. The first and the last. Meaning the, the black man is the father over everything. You can't have no brown if you ain't got a black man. Huh? You can't have nothing if you ain't got a black man. Hold on. The Quran will expire in a year, 25,000, 9,080 years from the date of this writing. The nation of Islam is all wise and does everything right and exact. The planet Earth, which is the home of Islam, and is approximately 25,000 miles in circumference, so the wise man of the East, black man, makes history or Quran to equal his home circumference. A year to every mile. And thus, every time his history lasts for 25,000 years, he renews it for another 25,000 years in advance. Any damn baby can write history after it happened. That ain't no history. That's a report. That's a report. All right. Let us look into this. What captivated me when I first heard this was the brother told me, he said, Look in the Bible there in Genesis 15 and 13, where God said, No for surety. Talking to Abraham. As they say, the father of religion. He said, Ain't God making a promise to Abraham? He said, No for surety. Thou see, Abraham shall be a stranger in a land that's not there. And they will serve that nation 400 years. Now when he told Abraham that, that wasn't going down. He let them know what's going to happen from his offspring. Huh? 400 years. They shall serve that nation and be afflicted. By them. Then God said, after that time, I'll come. He said, I was going to send nobody. He said, I'm coming. Uh -huh. 
think about that, man. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the world. He said, and I will judge the nation whom they have served. Can't you see this white boy getting his butt whooped every day? Hurricane after hurricane. Tornado after tornado. Plane crash after plane crash. He owe every country on the earth today. His economy is falling apart. He's a dirty bastard. The whole world see his shame today. Is that right or wrong? Can any black man deny that scripture I just told him? You don't believe it? What did we sing when we came in the churches in the old south? And in the north too? I looked over Jordan and what did I see? I saw a band of angels coming after me. Huh? Swing low. Sweet chariot. Coming for to do what? Meaning you are not in your home. Huh? How, 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 how can you be in your home and you got to ask, can I come in here? Huh? Got colored oh, drinking fountains. White drinking fountains. Huh? White restrooms. Now, how can you be in your home? We was catching hell, working from get bright to get dark. Huh? Little girls being raped and ravaged by the boss man. Huh? Don't you know we wanted to get out of here? But now, you don't want to go nowhere. Because you're robbed and spoiled. You become a punk. You become a baby. I'm a dependent fool. Huh? Don't want to rule yourself. Want somebody to keep foot up your behind. Want, to, want people to walk on you. Want people to tell you, nigga, do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that. Here, God's man here asking you to come, come. No, you sit back with your hypocrisy and say, oh, them niggas don't want nothing but some money. If we don't have some money to show you what we can do by putting some money together, you ain't going to never show up. One brother, one brother, one brother met me in Atlanta one day. He's in the other community. In the dead community. See, when a man don't have aim and purpose in life, he's dead. Huh? You see people walk the street, don't know what they're going to do tomorrow? Yeah, what's happening? He say, ain't nothing happening. That nigga dead. Huh? Walking, walking dead man. And that's what the Bible is talking about. The dead shall rise when Gabriel blow his trumpet. Huh? See, see, I'm one of the side men with Gabriel. I ain't the main trumpeteer. Huh? But I got a trumpet. Do you understand? <laughs> Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the world. We don't want nothing. We some raw people. We spoil. Arguing with the man over affirmative action. Are you cutting off my food stamps? Damn check machine broke down once here in Chicago back in the 50s when I lived here. Niggas had a run on the check office. Where my money at? Where my money at? Where my money at? at? Depending on the white man to feed them. She spoil you on slavery in slavery time. He made an adulterer fornicator out of you in slavery time. This is why it's so hard, honey, for you to keep a man. Because huh? he's a hound dog. He's a filthy dog. Oh, the white man made us like that. 
He made bucks out of us. Made us go into all y'all because he didn't want number some slaves. Well, listen, listen, listen. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you the results of it today. We went into y'all, gave y'all babies. Yeah. Who took care of the babies? Come on. The white man did. Didn't he? And then we went to another woman, did the same thing to her. Who took care of the babies? Same thing going on today, baby. Niggas is getting you babies and heading for the hills. Ain't mine, ain't mine, ain't mine. Nigga, it is yours. You, you just a lazy, trifling nigga. Lazy. Don't even want to take care of your own seed. Your own offspring. Let the little girl and the, little, and the baby fit for herself. Well, she got to belittle herself to get some damn food stamps on the check from the white man. Yeah. Nigga, I should take you out of town and kill you myself. Yeah. Thinking, thinking this, thinking this slick, this slick the sister. sister. Talk about the sister. Like she, ain't good, she was good enough for you to go in, huh? Well, now you're talking about her. She ain't no good now. Nigga, you ain't no good. And then, and, and then you don't want to be over here because we work over here. We, we honor the sister over here. Huh? We protect the sister over here. And, and we don't let you play around in our garden over here. If you play in this garden over here, you're going to marry the sister before you play over here. Nigga, nigga got so much adultery in him, brother, y'all. I ain't going to marry nobody, baby, until I test things out. I didn't do no on hand movement. See what I mean? Nigga, you sorry. Now, see, in our divine nation, listen to me now. In our divine nation, God ain't going to bring us together unless we're compatible. See, sister, what you're supposed to do is fall in love with God. Brother, you fall in love with God, and then when God bring y'all together, oh, baby, it's the perfect match. The perfect match. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the world. Now, Farrakhan, to me, it ain't written nowhere. But I'm writing it today. I think Farrakhan is the most faithful man God have ever had. I can hear your rotten self out there now saying, Farrakhan has sent his top henchman over here to try to fool somebody. I hear you thinking. I said, Firecon is the most faithful servant God have ever had. <laughs> you know what some of them are saying now? Uh, uh, how could he be more faithful than Elijah Muhammad? He is Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> listen. Listen to me now. February the 25th, Come on, brother. Elijah Muhammad disappeared. Come on, and 
they say he was dead. And some of you out here believe he's dead now. Some of us wearing the name Muhammad believe he's dead. But now how do I prove that he's alive? Without showing him to you. Now, what God does fire concern? Master Farad Muhammad, is that right? He don't follow no spook God. Now, Master Farad Muhammad was born in 1877. Listen, hear you, Ottawa? How could God be born in 1877? I hear you thinking. And how could God be one if 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 if, if he was born in 1870? Who was God before him? You know when the Bible said no man never seen God? It ain't talking about the one today. It's talking about the one that created everything. Huh? Nobody, no one never seen him. But listen, that power that he created is bound up in the universe. And that power and that knowledge is here for man to comprehend. Huh? And when one God come up, another God comprehend it. And then he want to add on to what he see have already been created. You understand? The sun was put in the universe six trillion years before the stars came. Now the God that put the sun up there ain't the same God that put the stars up there. What I mean, not the same. I'm talking the same finite. Uh, the same body. But the, it is the same spirit. It is the same knowledge. Uh, but not as the individual. That God that created the heaven and earth, he's still here in spirit. That have been coming down all these trillions of years. Now rest in the body of Master Farad Muhammad. Now Master Farad Muhammad had a knowledge of the God that put the sun in the sky. Now here's a God, a man, put a ball of fire in the sky 853,000 miles in diameter. Over two million miles in secundum. Lights up a universe that's 76 quintillion miles in diameter. 238 quintillion miles in secundum. Lights up and call the far planet platoon to bow and revolve at 1037 third miles per hour, standing 4 billion 600 million miles from the sun. That's a, that's a bad sun, is it? And my father put it up there. Oh, I know what you say. How could man do that? Huh? All right, if you think God is a spook or spirit, what is the greatest force in the universe? Huh? Water, and what comes from water is energy. And energy is invisible. Now ask me, do I serve the energy or do the energy serve me? If the energy is serving me, that means I'm the God over the energy. I tell you, we don't believe fat meat is greasy and grits is grosser. 
We believe in the thing the white boys said the Muslims is crazy down there. They have forsaken the, our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> you hear what the cracker said though? <laughs> our Lord. <laughs> Meaning is his Lord. <laughs> Not your Lord. Huh? Ah, uh, those niggas have gone astray. <laughs> Look, now all this knowledge I'm telling you now, Elijah Muhammad blazed the trail for forty some years. Huh? We build, we build an empire. Had five thousand acres of land in Georgia, producing land with cattle, the cattle on it. 14 chicken houses with 4,000 chickens in each house. 7,000 heads of cattle roaming the rain. Resting and dressing, laying down by the stream. We had a milk dairy where cows were being milked by stereo music. Uh, Clifford Brown and Charlie Parker blowing their horns while the cows was being milked. I'm serious. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. We had contented cows. Uh, we had music. The brothers on these big tractors plying up the field with stereo music. So you went good for listening to your jams, can't you? Huh? You know, a woman can work the house up and down as the jams is being played. Is that right? Time goes by fast when you're listening to things that you like to hear. So we had all of this. 5,000 in, 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 in Georgia, 2,000 in Alabama, 2,000 in Michigan, 400 in the British Honduras. Already out of the country. Printing a newspaper called Muhammad Speak, one million copies every week. Had business all over Chicago, almost on the whole south side of Chicago. In fact, we was heading to get it out. Huh? Think about these things now. Then Elijah Muhammad disappeared. I helped lift Warren Dean Muhammad up on my shoulder. Huh? Now, he is the new leader of the nation of Islam. Now, I didn't know what the man was going to do. I, if I'm guilty, I stand accused. Huh? Because we put him in office. And the way we did it was, secretary told me uh, that the enemy is planning to bring a division into the nation by saying, it's going to be a battle for the leadership between Raymond Sharif, who's the Supreme Captain, Muhammad Ali, Farrakhan. But we we going to go with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's son, Wallace D. Muhammad. So myself, Jeremiah, big minister out of Philadelphia, was doing 110,000 Muhammad speaks a week. I was cutting 40000 in Atlanta every week. Yes, and we got on CBS the 25th, February 1975, uh, and declared to the world, it ain't going to be no riff in the nation of Islam. We're going to ride with the son of Elijah Muhammad. Yes, so the next day at our convention, we lift him up. Yes, sir. Now, he, he, he taught Elijah Muhammad and Master Farad Muhammad that day. You go back and get the 75 tape, you'll see it. Yes, sir. Yield, he said he would not uh, be disobedient to leadership. Huh? He said he would follow the leadership of Wardine. Yes, now, Wardine was sitting on in the catbird seat with over a hundred bi a million dollar empire. Uh, over a hundred million, bro. We ain't going to give you the exact figure. It would be wise to do. But it was over a hundred million dollars. Then after he took office, what he did to tear up what we had built, he hated his father so much so. Huh? So 
He closed the family down. But I said, it wasn't no royal family. Discredited his own family. Then he began to tie the leadership down. The ministers and the captains around the country. If black people had the first organization that had some unity in it since they've been in America. But here's an enemy come from the Bible. Logic loans of Elijah Muhammad yes, sir. Uh, that had hatred for his own father till he want to tear down the man's works. Right. And see, and you get away with things like that because you are a member of the family. Yes, and, and naive people like we were, uh, we believed uh, uh, he must know what he's doing. You know, he's a family member. And we didn't realize what had happened till it was too late. But hear me, hear this. Elijah Muhammad had told me this was going to happen before it happened. But when it was happening, though, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't reflect back. He had told us this. He told us one would come and do more harm to his work than Malcolm did when Malcolm broke. Huh? Then he told all of us one time sitting at the table like Jesus told his disciples. Uh, in fact, he really is Jesus. Uh, I, I got to get. Uh, he was Jesus at that time. Now he's the Christ. I got to keep it straight now. Listen. Listen. He told us sitting at the table and said, All y'all going to leave me one day. Me, I jumped up, shot down no salt to your father. I ain't away. Wow, sweet, sweet as you are to me, no. Cause I know I was a nobody before I made Elijah. Oh, I drank liquor. I smoked reefer. I gambled every day. When one day passed in my life, I didn't gamble. Huh? And I know if I'd have kept on that. I'm going to tell you everything I've done. That's enough. That's enough. But if I had kept on that same piece, I'd be six feet deep. Not now. Thirty years ago, I'd have been dead. I show you it's not the right thing to do. And the reason is not the right thing to do because the Arabs think they have a monopoly on traditional Islam. Because when I went to Arabia, they tell me, say, oh, my brother from America, you accepted our religion. Our religion. That's meaning that he's sticking his chest out. He has superiority over the religion. And Elijah Muhammad is the only man that ever wrote the real true religion is the nature of man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the only one wants to set thy face for religion being upright. Yes, sir. The nature in which Allah has created men. Yes, there is no option in Allah's creation. Right. That is the right religion, but most people know not. Yes, and for Ab to tell me I have accepted his religion, then I shook the tongue to him and said, No, brother, you accepted my religion because I am the original man. So Wallace wanted to camp back there. I went to Arabia with him. 1977, November, I was in Arabia making hearts, going around the Kaaba. Got a black veil over trimmed in gold. Why is that? Why are you going around it seven times and not eight times? Why are you going and why not six times? Why seven times? Why are you kissing a black stone? Why not a white stone? Why not a yellow stone? Why are you kissing a black stone? Huh? Don't you know all these things mean something? Don't you know they ain't never riches? Seven times around the car bar? Five black the car bar covered in a black veil with trimmed in gold? Jesus, that's right. uh, and you can pay homage to a black stone, sticking your head up in a hole, everybody 
millions of people that kiss and hear you kissing it again? Come on now. Why is all of that? Come on. Yes, sir. Huh? Well, Elijah Muhammad had already told us about it before he ever went there. He said in the 7,000 years, them seven times around that tower, if the black man would be recognized in that 7,000 years. Uh, said the veil is covered over the car bar in black and gold, mean out of the head of the black man going to come pure knowledge. Gold is the purity, the most purest metal there is. So all this is symbolized right there. Yes, and paying homage, meaning the whole world like they kiss that stone. Right, that's right. Got to pay homage to the black man when they learn who the black man is. Yes, and who's ushering in the time of who the black man is if it's not Elijah Muhammad and Farrakhan. Yes, sir. Right. Huh? Right. See, Farrakhan got the whole world listening to him. It got to be a man of significance of that kind of value in order for the resurrection to take place. Some preacher back there in the corner, he can call himself Allah. If he want to, if he ain't on the world scene, he ain't gonna get nothing done. Speaking back there, boss, I'm the man, I'm the man. That park can ain't nothing but a fake. That's right. He's a charmer. He's an actor. Very articulate and eloquent. He used semantics with the greatest of them. But then God must be the qualified the man if he can do all these things. Is that right or wrong? You, you back there splitting verbs. Speaking saying does when you should say do and do when you should say does. Isn't that right? But you, but you claim that you the man through envy and jealous. Right, Some nigga out here running around talking about he the man now, talking about he visit the son. Come on, man, told us, how the hell you going to visit the son in his 14,072 degrees of Fahrenheit? He's dealing with such dumb as he said, I went at night. <laughs> Phonies, man. Uh, people can tell niggas anything. That's right, sir. And you know he got niggas following him? Yeah. Yeah. They told him he was the sun at night. Yeah. And the sun <laughs> told never stop shining. That's right, sir. Think about that, now. That's right. And, and nigga told him, yeah, Solomon's the man. What man? Right. A oh, foolish man. Yeah. An yeah. ignorant man. Yeah. A man that our lives blindly leading and wandering on. You know when you turn your back on this here, brother, you're dumb. You turn into you you, you you turn into a donkey or mute. Uh, or you'll be a mom the the quadrupeds, blind, deaf, and dumb. Nigga, you know you maybe one eye got a patch over there. Nigga, you got two patches over y'all. You can't see nothing. Listen now. Walt Dean got a hundred million dollar empire. But then he began to blast his father. Say his father had children by his secretary. So what? Come on. Uh, listen now, listen to me now. Let's get real. Hold on. Man, if, if I was married to you, honey, you couldn't give me no more children. And I got a mind like I got. Like Elijah Muhammad has. Should that mind and spirit cut off because you can't give me no more children? See, I, I don't have to get in the scripture and tell you where it was permitted by Allah. I'm going to tell it to you like you can understand it. Huh? 
should. I mean, in reality, that sister, you would want him. If he having a mind like that, you would like to see that seed come That's from right. somebody else that could bring the great warrior, the great God on the scene like he is. Right. Because Elijah Muhammad didn't see in his first children what he wanted. One time, Elijah Jr., me and him was like this one time. His name was Elijah Jr. And he told me one day, he said, Daddy going to tell us our history. And I'm laying out the salon restaurant waiting on him to bring the news back to what Daddy said. But when he came, he didn't say nothing. push him, but now I know what the news was. Huh? The news was, he told them all you was going to leave him. Huh? You know that story in the book about uh, Noah getting drunk and, his, and the son laughed at him? Huh? And one of them, and they cursed him to be black, that's the lie they tell why we black. But the real underlining story in that is, uh, I like the man laughed me. He 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 exposed the private life of his father. Uh, you know, because I go to the restroom like everybody else. That's right. That's right. And, we, uh, and see, we look for something divine different from that. Only you. Here we do. Look okay, you right here. So he's not a messenger. We see him in the marketplace. Come on, Listen, that about Jesus say he hang out with publicans and sinners. Is that right or wrong? See, 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 we're so dead in our mind. We think if you're divine, you don't have to use the bathroom. Huh? You don't have to eat. You don't. You don't need some money. Huh? That's how stupid we are. Now, by his family being around him, seeing him with his shirt off, he go to the bathroom, he tell a few jokes to, with them every now and then. They lost sight on who the man was. And all I'm left, listen to me, every last one I'm known is not what he likes. But now, the women he went into, their children by them. Yeah. Was Malcolm and Wallace try to say, make it sound like he was a dirty old man? Yeah. One of them is the minister right over there on Stony Island right now. Yeah. One of his other sons is the national secretary on Stony Island. One of his sons is a minister and, and the regional minister over the Caribbean, yes, running Miami all the way through the Caribbean. Yes, huh? Yes, Think over these things. Yes, then some of his daughters have married Farrakhan's children, who's really keeping the knowledge in the family. Yes, is that right or wrong? Tell me, was Elijah Muhammad right or was he wrong? Huh? When Junior done turned out to be a bum. Man used to be sister supreme captain in the nation of Islam. When we had Savior's Day over here in Indiana, I'm trying to pull him back. I said, Junior, come on, be with us. He said, well, I come out and hear what y'all say. I said, hear yeah, what we said, man. We preaching your daddy's teachers. Come on. Come on. Come on. He's so lost. Come on. He ain't drinking liquor now. Chasing out a young girl. Come on. It turned out to be a big bum. I seen another one of his sons. When Farrakhan brother passed, but he came into the palace. He used to be the sharp and dappest man you ever wanted to see. The nigga was pressed in those days. Shoes used to be shining like new money. Showed up this day, bagging clothes.
Jones. Say them. Play his daddy. Needing a shave and wasn't growing no beard. Teeth out. And it saddened me to see the messenger son like that. It did. But they turned their back on Elijah. And he saw me and he greeted me and said, Man, you look the same. This is after 20 some years. I laid back and said, Thanks to your father's teacher. Huh? Look now, there is 75 at this convention. Ward Dean had his boys packing. Heavy artillery. 357 Magnus. We in the nation of Islam ain't never carried a weapon. Huh? But they know they're wrong with two left shoes. They know they're finna mess up the nation of Islam so he got bodyguards walking around with stuff on. Come on. And, and you say, I know he, one of them dropped their stuff in the Fairmount Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia once. He's so clumsy, he dropped a piece on the floor. All I have a way of exposing you, baby. Uh, and, it, and, and, and when I saw that, I thought, oh. Back up with me, niggas here. I got to get out of here. Huh? Think over these things now. In that time, if Farrakhan had to say anything out of way, they would have killed him, bro. The die was set to kill Farrakhan. Then when he kept land basing the army lines, Farrakhan went to him and said, Brother, I said I would follow you and help you, but you 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 don't have no respect, huh, for your father. And that's what I said. I said the man don't care how much love I had for his father. He don't care. He just say anything about the man, huh? So after I left Saudi Arabia, he didn't have no clout. I split, and when I split. I, when I got back to the States in December of 77, Farrakhan had stood up the month previous. In November, he had held a press conference right here in Chicago saying he was going to rebuild the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Huh? Now listen. Now listen. Ward Dean is up here. Our car is in the basement. The elevator don't even want to move. He kept pushing the button, kept pushing the button, until he got two or three people with him. Then the elevator kind of shook and got off the, got off the basement floor. Walt Dean, way, way up in the heavens. Far car down here. You get two here. Get some in Mississippi. Get some in Georgia. Get some in Alabama. Get some in Florida. Now, at the same time that he stood up, nobody want to see the nation of Islam back in place no more. So what kind of enemies does the man have? Huh? Huh? He got Wardine, first of all, is the foremost his enemy. And later I found out why he left Hodge ahead of time. Because he had got the word over there that Farrakhan had stood up back here in the state to rebuild the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, and it made him sick. It's, they told us over there, say, uh, the imam had to return because uh, he got sick. Hell, yeah, when I come back here, I find out why he got sick. Farrakhan is enough to make anybody sick. Huh? If you was his, if you was enemy, yes, if you was his opponent, yes, do you know anybody sharper than Farrakhan? No, 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 no. You ever seen anybody could stump him, ask him a question that he couldn't have? No, no, no. Have you ever seen him try to duck a question? No, 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 no. no. Barbara Waters went in this house. He cut that, cut it, cut it down. Mike, Mike Wallace tried him out in Phoenix. 
Mike Wallace come out of there with his tail between his legs walking like this? Cooked him to death. Didn't nobody have far to come. So I can easily see why Wallace got sick. But in the meantime, here it is now. I remember one time the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told me when Malcolm and Wallace was out there talking to Lamb Base and Hill, he, he told us, don't bother. Right. That's right. He said, let them, let, them, let them say what they want to say. Right. He said, there ain't never two dogs right. barking up a tree. Right. Right. Now listen to this. I knew the message they taught me when I came in the nation. All the messages tell me, Honorable Elijah Muhammad, don't waste no words. Man, that sounds just like a little joke, didn't it? Yeah. Kind of like. Kind of he said, there's two dogs bark, bark, barking up a, set, uh, up a tree. Man, you can't give me no meaning out of that, and I know you can't. No more than what I said. Two fools barking up a tree. But look at the pendulum now. Ward Dean here. Farcon here. All right. But as Farcon began to move, Wallace began to bark. Didn't he? Started talking about Farrakhan. Oh, don't go back into that darkness teaching. Every time he knocked Farrakhan, Farrakhan getting a, get a little high. Getting a little high. Look, look he, he, he coming down. He coming down. Huh? And they're the pinning them tongue. Now Farrakhan is up in the heavens now. And, and he is down in the basement now. Is that right or wrong? The proof is in the pudding, baby. Now listen. Huh? Here's the significance of the dogs barking. I didn't know this until I went to Newark about two years ago to preach. And when I went in Newark, brother showed me a paper and said, hey, Wallace in there talking about fire car. He's a charmer. He's an entertainer. Huh? He's very fazad. He's eloquent and articular. And then he had in the article, Farrakhan's greatest foe. I looked at that and said, he ain't my foe. But then I realized then, for the first time after 20 some years, what Elijah Muhammad meant when he says, two dogs barking up a tree. You know, when a dog, tree, or fox, right, right. or a cat. Come on, come on, come on. The more the dog bark, the higher the cat and the fox get in the tree. Yeah. Huh? Is that right or wrong? Right, so that's what I saw. Wallace and, and Michael was barking, and the more they barked, the higher and higher we got. Yeah. If God exalted you, can't nobody bring you down, baby. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Listen. Listen now. Look at the enemies now. Ward Dean and his group are automatically enemies. And when I was down in Miami with Muhammad Ali, we were getting ready for the Sphinx fight. I wasn't in the, I, had, I had quit Wallace when I got back off of Hodge. I put him down. I got out of the, the web just in time. So I'm down there, and then they tell me about Farrakhan and stood up. So everybody talking about Farrakhan being a hypocrite because he ain't with Wallace. I said, wait a minute. How are you going to call a man a hypocrite if he's preaching that what he was taught? Huh? He con if he was converted to that, you can't call it. I said, we're the hypocrites. I told Muhammad Ali this, Jeremiah, and, and uh, Elijah Jr. I said, we're the hypocrites. We done left what Elijah Muhammad taught us. I said, you can't call Farrakhan no hypocrite. I was defending the man that didn't even know I was going to be back here doing this again. I did. But, but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had prepared me to be with him. I'm serious. I look back on what he told me in different times. He told me one day, he said, I cracked for a car. I, I said, yes, sir. He, he talked to another five minutes or so. And he said, I cracked Farrakhan. 
I said, yes, sir. We talked about 10 more minutes now. I'm just sitting there with him by myself. He made him. So I did big business for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I bought, I bought turkeys, chickens, cows, big dough. He, he used to put 30000 40000 in my hand and tell me, go buy this for me, son. Go buy that for me. I said, yes, sir. Huh? He knew I was a man that could be trusted. Yes, sir. He knew I loved the mission. He knew I loved truth. He knew I loved the black man and woman. He knew that. Put this on there, brother. Listen. So he prepared me. So he told me the third time that he cracked fire corn. Now I got a lesson here. Tell me that Mr. Muhammad cracked an atom into 10 million pieces. So when I knew I had that lesson, I said, he said, crack fire corn. So I heard up Doug Molesta. I forgot how many he had cracked it into. I said, wow. And really, it was about 30 million black people in America at that time. And he had told Farrakhan, said, through you, son, I'm going to get all my people. And then he prepared me to be with him. You know, with all that money and doing all that big business for Elijah Muhammad, because I had had done, done big business for myself in Atlanta, and, and I was a master. I had four restaurants, on, three fish markets, yes, a baker second to none, right, two tractor trailer trucks, right, two of them, yes, refrigerated units. They had another 24 feet one that was a refrigerated unit. I just drive around canning fish and other produce uh, locally. But them big rigs just run from Atlanta to California. I was such a way I do it. I don't want to pat myself on the back too much, but I had got to tell you this. I was so way out. I told the brothers, go down there and get a load of watermelons. Take them to California. Let the, let, let the brothers in California see how our watermelons taste. Right? Now, you know you got to be you got to be a brother to do that, baby. Huh? That's right, that's right. Take my truck, load it up with watermelons, and send it to Los Angeles. Huh? That's right. And don't charge them for the load. You know, I had some love for them brothers. I just wanted them to get some from all that they found. Huh? And then, as I did that, the brothers invited me out there. When I got out there, they had brand new suit for me. White on white shirt. Diamond cufflinks. Uh, see, you always get rewarded for what you do, boy. Uh, that right or wrong? Listen. Listen, now. So far, gun there's in the top. Now, why does they stop barking yet? They stop. Still making noise. Wrong religion. Wrong religion. That ain't the right religion. That ain't the right religion. All right, look, li- listen to this. Listen, listen to this. See, see, we, we don't, we don't believe, we don't believe nothing. We, we, we don't, we don't believe a thing. We don't approve it to them. Hold on, I got so many places marked in here. It's gonna take me time to find the right one. I'm on. See, they call me the Sundown Kid. I can teach that long. There's a sundown kid. He don't know when to stop talking. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Listen to this. See, the people don't really believe we teach real Islam. All right. Because you're sitting down in here. Right. Instead of being down on the floor on your behind. Like this city masjids around the world. That's right. Well, how are you going to put a dead man in a masjid? Come on. Dead man. What I look like standing up here telling you, Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Lai, me. 
Allahu Akbar. You don't know what I'm talking about. Is that right or wrong? And here they tell us, y'all in the nation of Israel, y'all don't make a Nigga, you don't know what I do. You don't follow me home. I bet you I do some praying. You ain't got no enemy. I got an enemy. You ain't got no enemy. White man don't care nothing about that sugar pussy religion you got. You know? He don't care nothing about that. Nigga over there talking about he's a Muslim. Alhamdulillah, Allah, 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 Allah. Hey, hey, Islam is for all mankind. You my, you, you my white brother. That devil ain't none of my brother. Send them to talk about Islam is for everybody. I said, wait a minute, brother. I said, hold on, go on. I said, when the trumpet is blowing, I'm blowing one, too. So when the trumpet is blowing, now we are gathering on the guilty blue eye. One of them old weak Muslim told me in Los Angeles, I was on the bus, mine out there where the Arab Muslim was when I dropped that. I don't hide no truth. I tell it when I know it. Huh? I dropped that in front of them Arabs out there. In the air, I dropped it in front of her, had blue eyes. Blue. I said, there be a gathering of the guilt of blue eyes. One of war dean me, hey, wait a minute, Rock, why they don't mean that? I said, wait a minute, brother, I didn't ask for no interpretation. I said, didn't it say that? We can't get out of that. All I tell us in the Holy Quran, some verses are decisively. I'm an allegory. And none know the meaning of except Allah. Don't nobody know the meaning of the allegories but Allah. And then those slick scholars, the Arab, then they try to introduce, huh? Except the wise one. Huh? The scholarly one. What made you a scholar? Fire can't cut all y'all down in Mecca. Cut you down in Mecca. Oh, the Jew is my brother. No, oh, no, 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 no. This book tells me do not take Jews and Christians for friends. For they're the friends of each other. Uh, aren't they? Aren't they united together to keep me and your black behind down? That's, that's why we have never become free, because we think they can free us. When have you ever known a slave master to free a slave? Abraham Lincoln then found out it was cheaper to let you go. Because you can't go when you're in the sphere of another man's knowledge. Huh? If, if can't nobody come and break you out of that sphere, you'll remain a slave. Look what happened back there in that time. When they say you're free, we ran to the plantation gate trying to run out of it. We were like, we free, we free, got to the gate. Put on the brakes. Go ahead. Come back, bag and ball. Can, can I can I just stay here with you, Paul? And, 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 and you you can continue to work me. Just give me something to eat and, and place to stay. We start tapping and going on, scratching when the, when we wasn't itching nowhere, laughing at damn jokes wasn't funny. Huh? Just to stay there with boss. No, what reason you couldn't be free, baby? You didn't have nobody to lead you. 
the spear that the white man had you in, they'll put you in a spear of, spear of dependence. That's right. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Now that God come down and make you independent. That's, right. That's why I told July 4th, 1930, for fools here in America celebrate July 4th, or another man's Independence Day, and don't even know what in the damn Pennsylvania is. That's right. <laughs> Over July, you couldn't walk through the black neighborhood. Right. Right. That damn barbecue just smelling everywhere. That's, that's right in. Right in. Right right you took the holiday from the cracker. Yes, sir. Took Christmas from the cracker. Yes, sir. Took Easter from the cracker. Yes, sir. Took them all. Yes, sir. Nigga, holiday is Christmas. Right. Nigga, I was, on, I was on the job right here in Chicago back in '58. Christmas time rolled around, and the niggas had to volley and they're just drinking. Jordan, they're drunk. Hand, hand me the bottle. I said, I don't drink, nigga. Here you go, man. I said, I don't drink, nigga. Go ahead, brother. Come on, take a I said, I don't drink. That's right. Come on. It's Christmas. <laughs> understand these words I'm going to say now. And when we change a message for a message and Allah knows best what he reveals. They say thou art only a forger. Nay, most of them know not. Say the Holy Spirit has revealed it from thy Lord with truth that it may establish those who believe and that God is in good news for those who submit. What message was changed? The old Islamic message was changed. Where was this revealed at? The footnote said, this chapter was revealed at Mecca. Where is Mecca in America? Detroit. Mecca in Arabia and Medina in Arabia is the same distance as Chicago and Detroit is. Huh? Now, where was this revealed? In Mecca. But what Mecca? Which one of the Meccas? Which one? Detroit is Mecca according to us. Right. And not only that, the white folks know they call it Mecca. Right. And the Shriners order of things, they call Detroit Mecca. What white Shriners. And they call Chicago Medina. Meaning they know something we didn't know. Muhammad came and taught us Prophet Muhammad was a forerunner for him. Yes, sir. And he had to be. Because the Quran says he will make the religion overcome them all. Yes, all of the religions. Yes, now Prophet Muhammad ain't doing that. Right. 
Islamic, Islam got on the rise because of Elijah Muhammad. Yes, Niggas who knew about Islam before Elijah Muhammad came along had it in the closet. Yes, Nigga get in the closet, hide in the closet, cover his head up back there. Nigga wouldn't come out in no book. Well, I'm telling you what I know. Well, when Elijah Muhammad came out with a new message, different from the old message. Huh? Because the old message was talking about Prophet Muhammad. Huh? What he did in Arabia. Then the Holy Quran tell me Allah sends every nation a messenger. Then how are you going to tell me Prophet Muhammad is the last messenger when America had not come into existence at the time that God said he sends every nation a messenger? Huh? Then it tells us he sends a messenger speaking in the language of the people that they may understand it clearly. Some nigga around here got the audacity to tell me I don't have real Islam. What is real Islam? You don't even know what real Islam is. Praying five times a day ain't real Islam. Fasting ain't real Islam. Making hard ain't real Islam. Real Islam is a duty imposed on the believer. What is that duty that's imposed on the believer? Huh? To pro 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 propagate the faith. Who propagate the faith of Islam more than the nation of Islam does? Nobody. Then the Holy Quran gives us in the ninth chapter what, what the real deal is. And the real deal is that Allah has pointed out to man two conspicuous ways. Then the question is that, what will make man comprehend what the uphill road is? All right. Huh? Yeah. He has pointed out to man two ways. Two. You know they were two ways. Right, right. right and wrong. Right. Is that right? right. And then he said, what will make thee comprehend what the uphill road is? Right. And the answer to that is to free a slave. Offering nearly related yes, uh, to feed in the day of hunger yes, or help the poor man is lying in the dust yes, and then exalt one another to patience and mercy. Yes, These are the people who believe. Uh, Think about that now. Yes, Think about There's other Muslims doing what we're doing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm trying to free a slave up in there right now. If you got that slave, if you got that slave mentality, you coming out of this thing after I, after I get through with you today. Huh? I know you can see because Ray Charles can see this. Stephen Wonder can see this. Now you up here, you up here, blind, droopy eye, can't see nothing. All right, let me finish that. I didn't finish it all now. Look now, I got to go over that again because I got to, I got to make you understand this. And when we change a message for a message, and Allah knows best what He reveals, they say thou the only a fortune. Isn't that the first thing they said about Elijah Muhammad? Yes, Nigga, the folks that stuff, the meat that stuff up. Make it up. And as our folks said, who could make up me and you being separated? Nobody. Unless it is a divine man. That's right. Who could make us sex one another in the back door in 1930 if it wasn't divine? That's right. Huh? That's right, sir. Who could make us stop cursing? Uh, if he's not a divine man. Who can make us love each other if he's not a divine man? Uh, who can stop us from loving our open enemies if he's not a divine man? We're so blind, deaf, and dumb. We love the white man more than we love ourselves. We do. We do. You remember, you remember in slavery time when the white man's house caught on fire? 
Damn slave throw more water on the house than boss throw on it. And told boss, our house is on fire. Our house. Huh? Listen to that. When the boss got sick, you know what he said? Boss, we sick? That's a damn thing, man. For somebody to love his open enemy more than he loved himself. See, there's so many things in the Bible and the Holy Quran to show you how you're supposed to be, be with us. I know you ladies is here. Because I know what you're saying right now. I would be down, y'all, man, but y'all want me to sell them paper. Don't you know what we're doing when we sell the paper, man? We bringing beautiful women in like you see over here. Huh? And then, and then we're trying to build an empire up so we can take care of them. See, the Holy Quran teaches me that men are the maintainers of women. Big old lazy man sitting up home babysitting. Sending his wife to work. Nigga got an apron on walk around the house. With slides on. I'm going to get me a baseball bat and run through Chicago, beating every nigga I find at home. Uh, all right. All right, then. Thou art only a forger. The book said, Nay, most of them know not. Say, the Holy Spirit has revealed it from the Lord with truth. Have we ever received anything other than truth? If we had to receive anything other than truth, we could be condemned as liars and would be put to the slaughter, would be imprisoned because God is not with a liar. Do you understand? Then the Holy Quran tell us that if he had forced this against us, we would have seized him and cut out his heart vein and not one of us could have saved him if Elijah had made it up. All right, now listen. Say, it revealed with truth that it may establish those who believe. Everybody ain't going to believe it. For those of us who believe it, we established, baby. When they said fire kind they said the nation of Islam. Nation of Islam, Minister Farrakhan. Farrakhan, Nation of Islam. Nation of Islam, Farrakhan. The two are simultaneously. Uh, they interwoven with each other. So we are established. And as a guidance and good news for those who submit. Isn't in this good news? All right, all right. This is what it say down here. You get a little the better understanding more. And indeed, we know that they say only a mortal teaches him. The tongue of him whom they hint at is foreign. And many Arabs have told me. All I don't hear y'all in that pra- in, in y'all language, huh? Because we speak in a foreign tongue. It's, it's right here in the book. I tell you, yeah, all right, now let me back that up with this. Look what it says. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I, Allah, am the best know. The revelation of the book, there is no doubt in it. It is from the Lord of the world. Or do they say he has forged it? I said, read to you about how they say he forged it before. After the message was changed from one message to another message. But well, here it says here, or do they say he has forged it? Allah said, Nay, it is the truth from thy Lord that thou mayest warn a people to whom no one has ever come before thee, that they may walk aright. Show me where you want to ever come before. 
And don't try to tell me this is Prophet Muhammad of Arabia 1,400 years ago because a prophet have always come in that part of the world every 100 years. For uh, here the book say that thou mayest one of people to whom no one has ever come before thee that they may walk aright. You've been walking backwards, man. Listen, listen. Preachers in the church they wear a collar's turned backwards. Come on. And you and you and you follow.